G'day, my name's Ben and I'm from Australia and um, I have just watched one of Nick Gisburn's um, blogs on YouTube and it actually sparked an interest to me um, where basically I, I watched the one where he said how to prove um, there is no God and um, at first glance I thought that um, Nick was a bit of a, um, a mocker I suppose just one of those guys that just, what's the word, cynic pretty much but after watching his video, I realised that he is a seeker, he's a searcher, and he's actually trying to find the truth. Um, and I say to you, Nick, keep trying, um, keep searching for the truth, because the truth is out there. Sorry to sound cliched. Um, but yeah, I wanted to share something, because um, I have been searching in my life. Um, I've actually been brought up as a Christian. And I've gotten to the... I'm now 23 years old, and I've gotten to the age where I actually want to know why I believe what I believe because in reality I've been brought up in the Christian faith uh, my parents were Christians my grandparents were Christians um, so it was really deeply embedded into me from a, an early young age and now I'm getting to the point where I'm like I believe if, if I believe there is a God um, I want to know why I believe that and not just because it was taught to me I want to find the evidence um, and from that perspective I think I'm finding you know day by day different answers to the, the questions that I have um, I read a book which has actually really helped me and which is um, William A. Dembski it's called Intelligent Design in, re in reality I haven't actually read the whole thing I've only read the first half of it because it's really it's actually tough going um, but just the the first chapter um, flipped me out a bit where he basically goes out to prove scientifically how well actually not even that he comes up with an algorithm um, scientifically so that you can define whether something has intelligent design that can be any given object whatsoever um, and I thought I would share that with you so basically this is it how do you decide whether something has intelligent design the algorithm is complex specificity or specified complexity uh, it has to be complex and it has to be specific um, and I'll explain myself for instance um, I've got some um, scrabbled pieces here on, on my desk that I'm going to show you. Um, in fact, I'll do it now. Have a look. Okay, A N. Right. So those two letters, um, you know, they are specific. We can we can say, okay, do we, the question is, do they have intelligent design? Have they been put there by an intelligent entity? Um, a N. They're specific. Yes, they spell a word. N. But it's not a very big word. Um, so it, we can't actually say that it's complex because there's only two letters in it. So it's it's not complex, but it is specific. So we cannot conclude that it has intelligent design. But um, then we have a look at, uh, at a different one, which is. Let me have another look. Just throw some scrabble pieces down here. Um, it took me ages to do this because it took me a long time to get these pieces together. Okay, if we see this on a table, N G O T O Ed. All right. Now we can we can conclude that um, those Scrabble pieces are complex because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's ten of them. Okay, uh, so they're complex. Um, but are they specific? No, they don't spell anything. They don't mean anything. So we cannot conclude that they are complex and specific, they aren't intelligently designed. We can't conclude that. They might be, but we can't conclude that scientifically. Okay, but then if we have a look at the table, now I don't have any letter K's, I couldn't find them for some reason, but if we look at, at this um, combination on the table, which is, me thinks it is like a weasel, strange sentence, I didn't have any letter K's, that's why they were the blanks, because I couldn't find them, it took me ages. Um, but me thinks it is like a weasel. Okay, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22. There's 23 combination, uh, 23 letters there. Um, and so that we can definitely say that they are, that that is actually a complex thing because there's 23. Now, there's 26 letters in the alphabet. So if you went to, how many was there? 23? Uh, I'll just, uh, okay, there was 23 letters, 26 letters in the alphabet, you times that by how many combinations there possibly are, it's like 23 by 26 compounding, it turns out to be 1 in 1 billion, 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 
different combinations you can get from 23 letters. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 1, 2, 3, yeah, I was right, 23. There's 1 in 1 billion, billion, billion. You can do the maths on that. 26 letters, 23 different, whatever they're called, 1 in 1 billion, billion, billion combination. So it's definitely a complex thing. And it's specific because it spells not only words but a sentence. Me thinks it is like a weasel. So we can actually safely assume that because it's complex and it's specific, we can say it has intelligent design. Now what am I getting at? That is simply giving you the code and the algorithm so that you can understand how to, get, how to define whether it's got intelligent design. So if we were to use it on a, a tennis ball or any other given object, you can do the same sort of thing, or a spoon. This is just a random item that I should have taken to the kitchen. Um, Okay, a spoon. Is this complex? Absolutely. Um, you know, look at the look at the way that it's shaped. It's curved. It's it's um, not something that could be just fallen together um, easily. Anyway, uh, so it's definitely complex. Is it specific? Absolutely. You can look at it. It's got specific designs on there. Um, it serves a purpose. So it's complex and it's specific. You can look at a spoon. If this was sitting in the bush, you would easily look at it and say, wow, that was designed. Um, what is that doing there? That wasn't just a fluke. It's complex. It's specific. It has intelligent design. Then you take the human hand, for instance. Okay, if I was to get a whole heap of dirt, scrunch it up together, throw it at the wall, if I was to do that a trillion, trillion times, um, I'm pretty sure you would say to me, pretty much every time you're going to get a lump of dirt on the floor. Um, what are the chances for me to get that dirt, throw it at the wall, it, and it falls down on the floor and becomes a human hand? Not very likely. Possible? Maybe in one in trillion, 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 I'd run out of videotapes um, saying trillion, trillion, trillion so many times. Um, it's possible, but so unlikely that we can safely assume that it's just never going to happen. All right? Your hand is complex and it's specific. There's, there's skin, there's nails, there's fingers, there's um, blood, there's all, all that stuff and it's all working together. It's very complex and it's working together to be your hand. It serves a purpose, it's a specific purpose. You, your hand and you are complex and specific. You've been intelligently designed. Okay, so now I've safely, I believe, proven scientifically and shown you how that that you can safely say you have been designed um, whether I say who has designed you that's a different question entirely but for starters you have been intelligently designed you have been created there is a God you can't be an atheist if you ask science to prove if there's a God and it does I just did I believe but um, if you can, if you can logically and prove me wrong, I'm very willing to listen. Love to hear your thoughts.